Hey teachers, uh, it's Mr. Flick here with MyTechBadges.com and I bet you're wondering how can I use your badges in my classroom and in particular how can I use the iPad photography courses? Okay, when you think about the iPad in the classroom, the most used app, well, is probably Safari because they do a lot of research and stuff, but I would say second to that is the camera. Kids are constantly taking photos of things and quite frankly, they are untrained and so their photographs turn out just hit and miss. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. So isn't it about time we get in there and show kids how to take amazing photographs? Because this, this is part of a modern classroom. I mean, kids are getting up there, they're showing their work, and sometimes that work is very visual and we need to be able to at least see what's going on and uh, better photos just make for better presentations and better better everything. So uh, let's talk about those levels. So level one, uh, your students will just start with the basics. They learn how to use the camera app, how to do all the controls on it, how to get things to focus, how to take over and make sure that the exposure is right, how light and dark the photo, and also how to use the, the photos app itself to organize their photos, use some simple filters, uh, those type of things. But they learn all those tips and tricks that no one ever shows them. They've just been kind of just opening up the camera app and pressing the shutter button. And so level one really takes them through some really cool projects and shows them how to take control of their apps. Okay, how to the iPad and the camera app. Okay, level two is all about object photography. Now they wanna jump right into taking pictures of their classmates, but we, we hold off on that a little bit. We build on everything in level one and then we teach them about composition and how to make things look really good. And we send them on a little scavenger hunt around the classroom, around their house, around their, their neighborhood. And they go and take these amazing photographs that you just are not gonna believe we're taking on an iPad. And they learn how to make photos look really good by using some simple techniques. Finally, in level three, we go over people photography, uh, the cautions about taking photos of people. So we talk about that and we talk about how to never take bad photos of people or embarrassing photos of people. So we really uh, touch on that to let kids know that it's about time that we take good photos of your classmates and of, of people, teachers, things like that. And so they go on another kind of scavenger hunt. They're given some photo assignments and they learn how to pose people to make them look good. And, and it really is kind of a fun project. And we also talk about the vanity of things too. So don't just, not just about, you know, hey, can I pose a good photo? But also um, what's the responsible way about um, the real world and, and the vanity of this selfie generation. So we go into that. Okay, finally for level four, it is all about the advanced techniques and about doing an exhibition and how to print your photos, mount your photos, how to make them look like pieces of art, how to take a panoramic photo, how to, take a photo that looks like it's miniaturized things. So all these things that so when they're done that, you have these photographers in your classroom that are just amazing photographers if they get through level four. Now, the other part about this video is you're going, okay, so Brad, they're, they're great photographers. I get that, that's really cool. Um, but how do I apply this in the classroom? So I've got a list of things here. Let me just put my glasses on and let me just refer to these. This is just brainstorming a little bit about how you can apply photography in your classroom. So of course, you know, when I was a third grade teacher, I could think, you know, the all about me project, you know, they could take photos of their, their, their life in the day, you know, what they do there uh, or, or about their week. You know, those could be two different projects. Uh, you could do a class timeline, things that happen over the whole year, and they snap photos and they know how to do, do that throughout the year and take really good photos. Uh, safety do and don'ts in the classroom, you know, um, where to put the trash, where to put the recycling, all those could be very visually represented in different photographs, all the really fun stuff for your class to do. And of course, uh, portraits of our school. So over time, you know, they could take different portraits of the school. What does it look like in the autumn? What does it look like in the winter? What does it look like in spring? Uh, those type of things uh, all around the school. And I've done those for years with my, my students in classrooms. Uh, with art and technology and those type of things, uh, they could go on assignment. You could always just assign them to, to take different photos. Uh, of course, photographing their art projects is amazing because sculptures and all those things take up space and they can't just be around forever. But when you can digitize them into a photograph, then you can keep them forever. And that goes for all your different artwork that uh, students are producing. And they can take different angles of them and such. So it works great uh, with art class. Of course, uh, school plays, preparing, all those things. You could have uh, tech crews that are out photographing and documenting things so that you have content in photographs for your classroom newsletter or blog or whatever you might be doing in your, your classroom. Um, photo sequences, about uh, they learn that in a lesson, I, I, believe, I believe level two, about photographing sequences to show kind of like uh, how to build Ikea furniture or how to put Legos together. They, they know about that from level two. 
Uh, language arts, uh, a simple photo of a story starter. They go out into their neighborhood and they get to spring back a photo and then you've got to write a story about it. Those are really fun projects. Uh, bilingual dictionary, you know, here's a picture of an apple. What is that in Spanish? What is that in French? What is that in German? Those type of things. So they could do a bilingual dictionary. Uh, science, uh, of course, there's lots of different ways to, to take pictures of science projects and to show all the steps involved with the scientific method and all those things. So science is a really uh, good one for photography. Uh, let's see what else I wrote down here. Um, they understand about taking close-ups so they can do really great things in science, get right in there and show the action. Uh, photographing weather, uh, photographing geographical things around them and uh, whether it's buildings or, or landmarks or um, uh, other things that are just around them, uh, it could be really kind of fun. And then environmental issues, they could photograph uh, the change in their environment around them to, to bring awareness to that. Uh, social studies, they could make vir virtual postcards, uh, go on uh, a field trip of their neighborhood and then bring everybody else along and during a presentation in your classroom. Uh, community history, photographing the, the old buildings around them and old things in history and such. Uh, math, you can use a lot, a shape book, a human barcode, uh, pictures in math, you know, all those things because they know how to draw on top of the photos as well to show angles and to show shapes and that, uh, such things like that. And finally, social studies, uh, picture puzzles, classroom jobs, all photograph, you know, what does it mean to be the line leader? And here's the photograph of that. Uh, illustrating emotions, you know, happy, sad, and curious. Uh, digital scavenger hunts, of course, they're really good. And I did a project once on uh, photographing stereotypes. So, uh, you know, here's a list of, you know, 20 or 30 different things. I uh, just think, how could this be represented visually? And you've got a perfect project for your new little photographers. So uh, have fun with this. Uh, the badges really just take care of themselves. So just, you know, assign them to finish levels one through four. Usually as homework, most of my students, I would say 80% of my, my badge work is done as homework. So I just assign them to do things. When I talk to them in the videos, I talk to them about in their house, they could go do this or that. And so it's, it's all prime for, for homework. So I hope your kids enjoy it. Uh, please send me uh, some of the great stuff that you're doing in there. I'd love to hear from you. I'll put my email address right below my face here. And again, just send me the samples, attach some photos and some stories, and I would love to, to get some feedback. So uh, have fun. Hope your kids enjoy it.